Hello guys, welcome back to the structural geology course. Um, today we are dealing with lecture seven, wherein we are looking into the introduction to outcrop patterns. We're going to look generally um, what are outcrop, uh, outcrop patterns and, you know, why are they important? And then, yeah, um, um, don't forget to like, share, comment, and hit the notification button below so that you get notified once we upload new content. This is MJ School of Mining and Geology, the only school wherein we are striving for excellence. Now, um, after the end of the lecture, you must uh, have an in-depth understanding of what are our crop patterns, why are they important, and, you know, um, the, these, how can these help you to, you know, read and understand the geological maps and, of course, recognize simple geological features from uh, the, from the map, you know. Um, uh, but we're going to start with um, the simplest terminologies um, wherein we talk about the horizontal strata and then the, the horizontal strata are those that were formed um, um, usually by uh, the they're formed in the rivers um, where in when the energy loses water uh, so it loses the the, the the energy we start depositing the finer sediments the bigger sediment sorry and then followed by this uh, finer sediment this is what you call the uh, normal grading or just the um the sedimentary rocks, sedimentary rocks in general, they've got some some layers, okay, because they were deposited, um, the sediments were deposited in the environment of deposition um, in the form of, of, of layers. And then we say when we've got the horizontal um, uh, layers, the, the, the layers will be continuous, so they will not be interrupted, all right? But now, um, yes, we also have got now, um, when we have um, those, the, the uh, deposited layers, those deposited layers they would be now in the form of beds. They would now be in the form of beds. So um, they would now be in the form of beds. They would now be in the form of beds. And then, and then yeah, so this would be the beds. This would be the beds. This would be different beds. And then this would be uh, the bedding planes. This would be the bedding planes, all right? And then the entire thing, let's say, um, when we look at the entire thing, we'll be looking at the stratigraphic units, all right? Yo, so... Um, I hope um, these um, um, terminologies make sense. I mean, you have to understand them because um, as mentioned in lecture and in, in lecture um, six, uh, that uh, the, the boundaries between the beds, they are very important because um, um, they would tell us much about, they would, they, would outcrop, they would outcrop in the form of certain shapes, all right? Yeah, so um, these terminologies are very important and the units are grouped together in stratigraphy as, as formations and members of, 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 of formations, all right? So units are a collection of adjoining beds that are grouped together when they have the same um, 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 mineralogy of, of they've got similar mineralogy um, um, fossils and many other structures, right? And then we call them th those things the 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 units. Um, so the other terminologies that we must um, um, they, they are worth understanding uh, what you call the the, the laminations. Or, uh, so we talked about the beds, we talked about the beds and then the bedding planes. But now within the beds, we can have small um, scale variations of composition. Then we call those things the lamellae, and they usually uh, uh, range from you know millimeters to one centimeters. All right, and then yeah, these are um, the the beds. These are the beds with the bedding planes, you know, yeah. And then if um, these beds have got some, some, you know, similar mineralogy and, and fossil uh, or they were paleontology and many other things, if we can group them, then they'll be grouped into the units. Then those units, they, begin, they can be, you know, in the form of um, also what you call the formations and the members and, okay. Yeah, um, this is just, um, <clears throat> now to introduce you to what um, outcrop patterns, outcrop patterns are the visible expressions of rocks and geological features on the Earth's surface. All right, outcrop patterns represent the intersection of the three-dimensional shape of the rock with the land surface. All right, yeah. So they represent the exposure of rock units or structures due to erosion, weathering, or human excavation when you now see them on the surface. 
all right due to um um remember um erosion it helps to expose what was hidden what was hidden below the surface of the earth all right outcrop patterns are useful when interpreting the geological maps because they provide valuable inf uh, information about the distribution and the orientation and the relationship of rock units and structures within a particular area and so that's why the outcrop patterns are very important to a structural geologist but not only to structural geologists but geologists uh, 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 in general to, to 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 the geologist in general because now they would help you understand now or to be able to understand and interpret what you call the geological maps and then these geological maps we know they are very important for you know for the exploration and many other applications now um let's look at the folded rocks you know let's look at the folded rocks um the folded rocks you know we've got some you know some synth lines we've got some synth line uh, anti lines anti lines um along the ridges and then you know some synth lines the, the valleys you know and then you've got some axial trace of synth line axial trace of uh, anti lines you know so so when rocks are folded the usual they also assume typical outcrop patterns character uh, uh, characterized by what you call the v shapes in lecture 6 uh, we've learned about the v shapes of the of of of, of uh, um the v shapes of the um outcrop patterns and these v shapes are very important because how they um they they uh, if they point upstream or downstream or if they're parallel to the contours they will tell us much about um what is happening below the surface of the earth all right so yes so even the for the 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 the, the, the faults the faults can be recognized using what you call the v-shapes but now i'm just telling you about the, the general idea of what are, are outcrop patterns but in lecture eight we're gonna now look into this in greater details when we're gonna be looking at the rule of vision uh, the rule of this now at, at the, the the rule of this, I'm, I'm just introducing the topic, you know. It states that when observing a geological feature such as fold or fold, uh, uh, fold or folds in plain view or in the map view, the outcrop pattern will often resemble the, the letter V. The outcrop pa pattern would resemble the, uh, uh, the, 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 the letter V. Now, this V um, or the letter V, it can now be either it can, you know, be parallel to the, the contours or it can just be uh, a straight line on the surface of the earth or it can now be, you know, cross-cutting the contours. Now, when when the, 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 the v, this V shape, it's now... Um, 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 you know, um, it's now parallel to the uh, to the conjures or their cross cutting. They tell us much about the fall, the the, the folds, the folds, and many other structural features. All right, this V shape is formed because the edges of the fold limbs, okay, um, um, of fold planes intersect the earth surface, creating a distinctive angular pattern. Remember, we told you that um, the um, outcrop patterns they are created when there is an intersection with with what you call the, the earth surface, all right? But you're going to understand these things more um, when we're going to be dealing with the rule of this, all right? So let's check this. Um, we mentioned the fact that um, the pl uh, fault plane, this is what you call the fault plane, um, when we have um, the, 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 the fault plane and also the, um, the fault trace. So um, when we've got this fault plane, Sorry, you know, you know, you can see it here. Fold plane with, so where in the apex would now be on the, the fold trace. The fold, usually uh, the fold, the, the, the apex of the V would be on the, on the, on the, the fold trace line. All right. So remember we said when we have um, also, when we're looking at the, 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 the fold, these are the limbs, these are the limbs, and then this would be the axial um, 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 planes, all right? So, <clears throat> um, because now the the sides of these limbs they intersect with the surface you're gonna they're gonna also resemble the v and then you can see we've got this v we've got this v can you now see we've got this v we've got this v so um which is why we're saying um this uh when the outcrops they resemble the shape of v will help the structural geologist to understand um 
whether we are having the fold, whether we are having the, the, the fold, or whether we are having the fold, all right? And many other structural features. So because the earth surface is irregular, planar features such as contact between beds, I mean, we've introduced you what is a bed. I mean, the, 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 the dikes are that, um, what cross cuts, the dikes cross cuts, and then and the, folds, uh, the folds, you know them. They typically form irregular outcrop patterns. Why? Because the earth surface is irregular, all right? But uh, um, 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 uh, if you want to have your ideal earth surface, you can think of the flat surface, which uh, has got some, um, 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 uh, which is a featureless area, all right? But now, um, uh, in, in, in reality, the earth surface is not irregular, all right? Agra uh, is irregular. And then now planar, fe uh, planar features, uh, the plan uh, planar features such as contact uh, beds, you know, dikes and folds typically form irregular outcrop patterns. Thus, outcrop pattern can serve as the clues to the orientation of the planes, all right? They tell you uh, 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 much about the, the orientation of the planes. So when the rocks are flat and the land is not, then the boundaries will outcrop along the topographic uh, topographic contour lines. The vertical features and nothing else will outcrop a straight line in hilly terrain. All right. So, but I'm um, I'm gonna show you um, in lecture eight that um, I'm not good at drawing. Um, that sometimes okay. Let me try to. I'm not good at drawing, but. Let me just try to make something like this. Yeah. So when we have got the planes, the, the the layers which are dipping like that, and then on the surface they would be yo. Guys, I'm not good at drawing. They're gonna be something like this. So the 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 then when you're using what you call the rule of V's, then the rule of V's would the, 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 there would be no V when we're talking about the, 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 the strata which are, uh, are dipping at 90 degrees. There would be no V, right? But if now the layers are horizontal, if the layers are horizontal like this, if the layers are horizontal like this, now the V, the V will be, um, let's imagine this as contours. The Vs will now be parallel with what you call the contours. Now, but you will understand this in lecture eight. I mean, they help us understand um, um, a whole lot about the uh, our outcrops. Okay. Um, now, that's why we say vertical features uh, and uh, nothing else would outcrop as straight lines in hilly terrains. All right. We we'll just see the outcrop as straight lines but um the um the horizontal they would um you know they would be parallel okay so where the rocks are flat and the hand the land is not the boundaries will outcrop along the topographic contours that, that is what i'm talking about all right this is what i'm talking about now all other orientations would have um would, will wave across the landscape cutting across the topogra uh, topographic contours now i told you that some you can have the, the 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 outcrop that is um um remember it's like the out the the contours the, the frame of references okay so you can have the the outcrop you know, cross cutting the contours or the outcrop um, uh, b b b being parallel or the outcrop just being straight. All right. Yeah. So this is about six outcrop patterns following rule of V's, which will be discussed in lecture. Sorry, it should be lecture eight. It should be lecture eight. It should be lecture eight because lecture seven is this one. Okay. So, yeah. Um, I hope you understand what outcrop patterns are. Okay, why are these outcrop patterns important? When studying outcrop patterns on geological maps, geologists can identify spatial extent of um, different rock units and formations based on their surface exposures. Okay, uh, by mapping outcrop patterns, geologists can delineate the boundaries between rock units and identify geological contacts such as faults, such as faults or unconformities where one rock unit overlies the other. So, which is why they are worth understanding. 
All ultra patterns also provide insight into the genetical history and evolution, uh, evolution of, of a region. By examining uh, the orientation and the geometry of outcrops, um, geologists can infer the structural deformation and the tectonic processes that have shaped the earth crust over time. For example, the orientation of faults uh, of faults and faults observed in outcrop pattern can reveal the direction and magnitude of tectonic forces that have affected the region. All right. Yes. And then, yeah, um, which is why, especially the rule of Vs, they are very important. But remember, outcrop patterns are not only limited to the rule of Vs. We've, we've got the outcrop patterns that come, are seen in, in, in igneous rocks, uh, the outcrop, other outcrop patterns we'll be talking about, the unconformities. There are a lot of other outcrop patterns, which we'll still discuss um, um, in, in the series of the structural geology. Just bear with us. We're going to make sure that the knowledge um, um, reach you with time. Now, the um, in, in conclusion, the outcrop patterns are valuable tools for interpreting geological maps. It means if you don't understand the outcrop patterns, you won't be able to interpret the geological maps. And if you don't understand interpretation of the geological maps, you won't, as a geologist or, or, or as a structural geologist, how would you um, um, do your exploration? How would you find your hydrocarbons and many other things? You need to understand these outcrop patterns because usually hydrocarbons they are you know they are associated with um, 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 synclines and anticlines wherein they are trapped within the faults, all right? And then if you 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 are not able to identify the fault. And, and the, 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 the faults and, and, and faults in your um, geological uh, maps, how would you now be able to find the hydrocarbons? Can, now can you, do you now understand that outcrop patterns are very, are, 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 are very useful tools, all right? So this is because they provide critical information about the distribution, orientation, and the relationship of rocks and the geological features on the Earth's surface. So by studying the outcrop patterns, geologists can reconstruct the geological history of a region, interpret the tectonic processes, and of course, understand the depositional environments and uh, that have shaped the Earth over uh, the uh, Earth crust over over time. So which is why good people and uh, the outcrop patterns they are worth understanding. This was this was just an introduction to um, the outcrop patterns. And the outcrop patterns, as mentioned, they're not only limited to the rule of these. We've got so many other outcrop patterns which we'll still discuss with time. So in lecture eight, we're gonna be dealing with now the rule of these. We're gonna deal with the out, uh, six outcrop patterns following the rule of these. All right. So um, we'll meet on the other side and I would like to say until until next time cheers